Uh, hello guys. Um, so here for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about the three applications of citing, um, citing and measuring. Um, those three applications are citing angles and spatial relationships, as well as proportions. Um, this demo here is going to be specifically about proportion. Um, remember that key word when we're talking about proportion is ratio. Um, this will enable you to draw any form, any object, be it a figure or, or a bowling pin, um, with a degree of accuracy and, and proportion. Um, when we're thinking about proportion, we're talking about comparing the small to the large or the bit to the whole, okay? Um, so that's the kind of relationship, the ratio that we're looking for. Um, so I've got my axis line, starting with my vine charcoal. Um, and I'm going to gesture out, nice and quick, nice and loosely, gesture out this bowling pin. Remember the gesture is the rough draft. The sighting, the measuring, is really what you're going to use to firm up and stabilize the gesture, bring more structure back to your drawing. The gesture is all about natural energy, organic um, sighting and measuring is all about geometry. So if you build on this organic start and, and, and bring some geometry, bring some stability to your drawing through the sighting and measuring, you have the best of both worlds. Um, so, working with this bowling pin, we've got a couple um, kind of landmarks or, or architectural moments throughout that object. I want to look at the widest part of the belly of the bowling pin, the narrowest part of the neck, and then that head. So I'm, I'm kind of dividing the bowling pin up in two thirds. So what I want to do now is try to see how many times the width of the bowling pin goes into the height of the bowling pin. So I'll close one eye, sight with a locked straight arm. My elbow is locked. Um, I'm taking my skewer. I'm putting the tip of my thumb on the right edge of the belly of the bowling pin and the tip of the skewer on the left edge out here in real life. All right. And that's the measurement. That's the unit that I get. Now I'm going to imagine that my thumb is glued to the skewer. I'm not going to move my thumb and I'm going to take this and walk this through the height. Um, again, refer to the uh, lecture, the PowerPoint. There's, there's some really clear illustrations of, of what I'm actually doing right now. So I'm going to take the width of the belly of the bowling pin and I'm going to walk that through the height and I see that the width of the bowling pin goes into the height of the bowling pin three times. So the ratio here is three to one. One width goes into the height three times. I'm not going to take this actual measurement and put that into the drawing because then I'll have a bowling pin that's maybe two inches tall. I'm going to build off of my gesture. I'm going to start to kind of refine and, and sort of work with what I've got and pull this information into the drawing. So again, the width of the bowling pin goes into the height three times. I see that if this is the swell of my belly here, and again, I'm just building off of my gesture. I want to make sure that I'm the same length from this central axis. I see that one of these widths, the first unit, comes from the bottom of the bowling pin to that swell. So I know if that's my width, my bottom happens right about here. Okay? And that's already starting to look a little bit better, looking pretty good, nice and symmetrical. Got my bottom ellipse happening here.
one, two. That second width happens right at the narrowest part of the neck of the bowling pin. So the really cool thing, especially about man-made objects like this, when you're sighting and measuring, you're going to start to figure out their logic. You're going to actually be able to measure their proportions and, and figure out how they're actually put together. Again, making sure that I'm fairly symmetrical here. And then I saw that that third width happens from that narrow part of the neck to the top of the bowling pin. So notice how I've dropped about an inch my gesture, and I, I have a tendency to do this when I make a gesture drawing. Um, my gesture was quite stretched, a little bit too vertical. Um, so I'm keeping the width of my gesture and I am shrinking it, I'm, I'm, I'm shortening it. And that's starting to look a bit better, starting to look a bit more symmetrical. Now there's a couple other relationships here that I want to check. I'm going to cite the width of the head and compare the width of the head to the width of the body. So tip of my thumb here, tip of the skewer here, but out in life. And just like I suspected, the width of the head is half the width of the body. And that looks pretty good. So I'll take that unit there and I'll make sure that that's proportionate. That looks pretty good. And then I'll do the same for the neck and compare the neck to the head. And the same relationship happens here. The neck is half the width of the head. That looks pretty good. So now I have a pretty accurate, very proportionate, fairly symmetrical rendering of my bowling pin. Remember, you're always taking the small and comparing that to the large. Don't try to take the large and compare that to the small. Take the small bit, compare it to the whole. Okay, good luck.